carbon neutral energy, new medicines to treat cancer or COVID, and foldable screens. Thanks to quantum computers, these could be innovations of the future. For years, scientists have been confident that these processors will be the next big tech revolution. But how far have developers really come? And what can we gain? Quantum computers, that's our topic today on SHIFT. Quantum computers won't be replacing our laptops or smartphones. But apart from developing new medicines and materials, I think one aspect is especially interesting. Quantum computers can perform complex simulations, like predicting extreme weather very accurately. Across the globe, developers are trying to create computers with the highest amount of qubits. A qubit is the most basic unit of quantum computing. The more qubits a computer has, the more information it can process. Many companies like IBM and Google are competing to develop the most advanced quantum computer. Google's quantum computer recently simulated a wormhole, the holy grail in physics. So what are they doing in these quantum labs? After sending countless emails, we were finally able to visit the Google Quantum AI lab in Santa Barbara in the US. An incredible experience. Outside, the sun is shining. Inside the lab, some areas have temperatures of minus 273 degrees Celsius. The lab is run by German scientist Hartmut Neven, widely recognized as a pioneer in quantum computing. This somewhat unremarkable building is where Hartmut Neven wants to revolutionize the tech world. It's located on a separate high-security part of the university campus in Santa Barbara, California. Here, the German scientist and head of Google's Quantum AI Lab is working on a processor that could solve all the problems a classic computer can't. Let's start with what I think many would agree is the most pressing problem of our time, that is uh, climate change. It would be marvelous to have a nuclear fusion reactor. Now, a nuclear fusion reaction is when two nuclei, which are both positively charged, come close enough together so that they snap together, um, form a new nucleus, and then some energy is released. Some scientists hope that this could help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Unlike traditional power plants, nuclear fusion does not release any carbon dioxide. But um, those two positively charged nuclei, they don't want to come close together. It's like as kids, we know when we have two magnets, you know, that of the same polarity, they don't want to come close together. So this process to properly model it, um, quantum mechanical laws are required. So it stands to reason that a um, quantum processor would help us um, hasten the design of a nuclear fusion reactor. When quantum computers were still just a theoretical concept, Hartmut Neven already believed in their potential and his passion has convinced others after his doctorate. He does research at one of the most renowned universities in the USA. Naven co-founded two companies developing facial recognition technology. One of those companies was acquired by Google and laid the foundation for Google Glasses. Glasses with an integrated computer. In 2013, Hartmut Neven started working on the quantum AI lab for Google. I have um, spent many years in the field of um, computer vision and machine learning. To train a machine learning system, to train um, a neural network, for example, to recognize certain objects in an image, you have to solve a type of problem that's known as an optimization problem. And it has been proven um, analytically that quantum processors can solve these problems more efficiently. When the company Intel presented the first quantum chip with 49 qubits with much fanfare in Las Vegas in 2019, Naven announced in a small blog entry that his team had already built a chip with 72 qubits. Shortly thereafter, he claimed to have proven the functionality of the Google quantum computer. 200 seconds for a computational task that would take 10,000 years on a supercomputer. IBM and many others are doubtful. Hartmut Neven is a leading scientist in quantum physics. 
but that doesn't change the fact that it will take years until a workable quantum computer will have been developed. Quantum computers can compute very quickly, but there aren't many practical ways to use them yet. They're also prone to errors, and programming and production is very complex. Quantum electronics engineer Marissa Justina explains what these computers could mean for the future. Quantum computers won't replace laptops or PCs, but they will assist them. You probably won't see it much in your day-to-day -day life. So a quantum computer is not a replacement for a regular computer. It's more of an assistant to the regular computer. Uh, to make a transportation analogy, when humans were wanting to travel to the moon, it was clear that you're, you need a rocket. You need some kind of technology that's different from what we use to get around on the ground. Now we have those technologies, it does not change the way you go to the grocery store. So similarly, having a quantum computer will not likely change the way you do your day-to-day -day activities, but it will be a research tool that allows for possibly revolutionary changes in, for example, materials development or pharmaceutical development. So the way you will experience it more would be kind of the second level effects. Medicines could become more efficient and affordable thanks to quantum computers. They can simulate molecular structures in a matter of seconds and calculate the combination of active ingredients, which could replace testing them in laboratories. This would enable pharmaceutical companies to develop and release medicines much faster. We can also benefit from quantum computers when it comes to traffic. The quantum computers are able to process very large amounts of data in seconds. They could calculate routes, taking traffic lights and speed limits into account, keeping traffic flowing. Future quantum computers will be good at testing many different scenarios to find the best one. Why are they more efficient at this than so-called supercomputers? Well, they use the rules of quantum mechanics, which apply to microcosmic processes. The principle of quantum mechanics suggests that particles can exist in two separate locations at once, having the value of zero and one. Sounds too complicated? Check this out. Laptops, calculators, or smartphones, they all use the information unit bit, which can appear as either one or zero. Quantum computers use the laws of quantum physics instead and work with quantum bits or qubits. Rather than switching between zero and one, qubits can be both simultaneously or appear as something in between. This principle is called superposition and can be explained by using coins. To represent one bit, heads or tails need to be on top. It's clear. One or zero to represent a qubit, the coin rotates. Rather than being limited to either being heads or tails, the coin is both. Quantum computers can calculate simultaneously, where conventional computers calculate sequentially. This makes quantum processors fast and efficient. More qubits mean more computing power. This computing power rises exponentially according to the number of possible states. One qubit can take on two values simultaneously, two qubits can take on four, and 20 qubits can take on more than one million. Quantum supremacy. In tech circles, that's what they call the point in time when quantum computers will have overtaken supercomputers. Scientists around the world are competing to create chips with the highest amount of qubits. The technological challenges are huge. So far, Google's quantum computers only work in lab conditions, in extremely cold temperatures and isolated from the environment. Quantum electronics engineer Marissa Justina is responsible for creating ideal conditions for the qubits at Quantum AI Lab. So this hardware actually is just a refrigerator. It's warmest at the top and it gets colder as you go down. People often show pictures of some system that looks like this and they think, oh, look at that big quantum computer. Actually, the only thing that's quantum in there is this small silicon chip, which is down inside some layers of packaging in here. The quantum chip is just as big as a fingernail. It sits at the bottom of this nearly two meter long construction of cables, metal sheets and conductors. Marissa Justina's responsibility is to make sure that everything is connected properly. 
She runs the so-called device packaging team. And in order to show the quantum effects, it has to be operated at very cold, dark environment, colder than outer space. And then we have to be able to send signals from room temperature electronics all the way into the cryostat to reach the processor, interact with the quantum processor, and then the signals have to come out again. And I'm responsible for getting that processor to be in a good environment where the qubits can operate at their potential. Welding the technology onto the chip requires clinical precision, and building quantum computers has more challenges. Since they use different laws than normal computers, they are also extremely difficult to program. How do we control the control signals that we send in? How do we make sense of the measurement signals we get out and use them. There are a number of different technology areas that we need to develop, each of which has a little bit of, of ambiguity in it, or sometimes a lot of ambiguities. And you need them to all line up at the end and, and uh, become a working functional system. Marissa Justina predicts that quantum computers will be used in about five to 10 years. But whether quantum chips will be used in the future is not just a question of technological progress, but of money too. A study by Boston Consulting Group has found that using quantum computers costs up to 3,000 to 5,000 euros an hour. By comparison, using a traditional cloud computer costs less than a cent per hour. Another interesting aspect is who invests in quantum research. Apart from tech companies, states too are investing. China tops the table with 14 billion euros, more than all other countries combined. One reason for state interest in quantum computers is that they could hack into digital encryption methods. This would have consequences for crypto wallets, chats, health data and military tactics. What do you think? Will quantum technology change our lives? heal illnesses, or even slow down climate change? I'm curious to see which areas will make a quantum leap and what that means for us. We'd love to hear from you. For now, bye and see you soon. Mm -hmm.